children today we are going to recapitulate this wonderful and inspiring story about how chandragupta maurya came to be the ruler of magadh under the tutelage or with a lot of support from one of the finest and most intelligent men of that india has ever produced chanakya now <clears throat> when we trace back this is basically not a story of chandragupta it is basically the story of the brilliant chanakya when chanakya was born he was born different generally babies when they are born they do not have any teeth but when this little one was born he was born with a complete set of tooth so obviously it bothered the parents a lot that why this aberration why is it so different why they would this happen and generally we indians we are bent on consulting astrologers on certain occasions especially on certain auspicious occasions like say the birth of a child the marriage of people or even during the demise of a person so chanak who was chanakya's father he consulted an astrologer and asked that why do you think this has happened so the astrologer said that this is unusual but this child had a wonderful future ahead he would grow up to be a king or an emperor this kind of news given to any father would have made the father very happy but it did not happen with chanakya chanak sorry chanak was shocked because the kind of times that he was living in he saw that the king who was the ruler of magadh was a very very tyrannical person and he had also adopted very unfair means to come to power so he did not want his child to become a ruler and he was so uh, taken aback so shocked that he actually wanted to pull out the teeth he wanted to pull out the teeth from the child but the mother obviously when he was trying to do this to the child the child shrieked out and he cried and the mother intervened and she put a stop to this terrible thing that the father was about to do chanakya was saved with his set of teeth and as he grew up his father conducted his education in the normal fashion of those times his father educated him at his own ashram and then when chanakya was 16 he went to the university of takshila by the time chanakya was 30 years of age he started to prove that he was a man of exceptional merit because he was recognized as one of the greatest scholars and offer and he was in fact offered the post of the professor at the university and when we study some of us we see we are interested interested in mathematics some of us in english some of us in sciences so the interest areas of chanakya included classics contemporary politics and the working of other kingdoms in and around magadh so this proves that he was an ex- man of exceptional intelligence and his bent of mind was also towards the politics of a country now as time went by one day chanakya's friend informed him that the ruling king whose name was dhananda he had actually decided to open a dan kendra now dhananda was a very very greedy king and he had never by till that time done anything good for the people of his country so what does a dan kendra mean that that is a place where he would like to give something without expecting anything in return any object any good to the people of his kingdom 
सो दान केंद्र ना दैट वॉज वेरी सरप्राइजिंग अ मैन हु हैड नेवर थॉट ऑफ डूइंग एनीथिंग गुड अबाउट हिज सब्जेक्ट्स सडनली बिकमिंग सो पेनेवलेंट दैट ही वॉन्ट्स टू गिव समथिंग टू हिज सब्जेक्ट्स सो चाणक्य थॉट दैट इट वॉज समथिंग वेरी फिशी सो ही डिसाइडेड टू चेक इट आउट फॉर हिमसेल्फ द ऑपरचुनिटी प्रोवाइडेड इट सेल्फ द किंग वॉज लुकिंग फॉर अ ब्राह्मण who could be appointed as the manager of the dan kendra and chanakya who was very very self confident and knew he was one of the most intelligent people he thought of taking this opportunity and becoming a uh, the manager of the dan kendra so he wanted to present himself as a prospective candidate to find out from inside that why did why this change of character from dhananda did he have any vested interest so he traveled to pataliputra to figure out when he went to pataliputra he found that in the capital the people did not like the king dhananda and there were also people who were conspiring to kill him to do away with him and when he was walking there was a man who spoke to him and he said that he too as a normal citizen he too was very concerned and uh, surprised that why the sudden change of heart for this tyrannical king but then he was a uh, probably a person of with a positive attitude and outlook and he thought that maybe something good will come out of it but the best part is that uh, finally you know it is the manager who is going to run the dan kendra like for our country the president is the head but the person who runs our country is the prime minister so he said that see if the manager is good the manager who is actually going to be instrumental in running the dan kendra if the manager is good then maybe it would be a good thing for the citizens now actually what happened was the that when chanakya he found out that basically later on or we as we come to read the story we see that dhananda was actually a tyrannical king the point was that when the king found out from his informers that his subjects were not very happy with him or that they in fact wanted to kill him he thought of having to win their heart somehow by hook or by crook so he thought all right let's open a dan kendra let's give gifts to the people to appease them to make them calm down so that at least for the time being my life is saved and after that i'll think of something else because a man who is bad by character after all will find out ways in which to extricate things or take things back so he thought for the time being let let me calm these people down make them happy so that they don't conspire against me and my life is saved now coming back to the story chanakya went to dhananda's court and he found that the king had still not arrived there and he saw the throne and he saw that there were nine seats which were near the throne and obviously the guard who was there he informed that eight of them belonged to the nanda princes of the nanda dynasty because dhan nanda the king he belonged to the nanda dynasty and the ninth the m1 which was still unoccupied or empty was for the manager because the manager had still not been selected so without hesitation chanakya declared that well i am the new manager that is why i am here i am the rightful occupant of that ninth seat obviously the guard he was not very conversant about the selection procedure or whatever was happening with the kings and the lords etc he also believed and he thought okay fine that means the manager must have been appointed and this must be the manager and chanakya looked like a proper brahmin but children can you see that from the very beginning this entire dan kendra is so much tilted in the favor of the nanda princes because even if you are having a vote eight out of nine votes are going to go to the nandas whatever they think is going to happen is going to happen so naturally it was all a set up affair so the manager of the dan kendra was just there for show but the actual decision 
lay in the hands of the Nandas only who occupied eight out of the nine seats. Now, finally, with all of this done, the king makes his dramatic entry. But the king knows that by I have not uh, actually elected any manager. So he says, he looks at Chanakya and he wants to find out that who are you? He asks this Brahmin that who are you? So Chanakya, he very confidently tells him that I am the person who wishes to be the manager of your Dan Kendra because Chanakya knows that the king knows that Chanakya is not the new manager and he had already sat down and occupied <clears throat> the seat of the new manager. And one thing to remember is that since uh, at those point of times you did not have Volvo buses and uh, other means of communication, this man had traveled a long way from his home to the capital. So by that time, he had a bedraggled look. That is, he was very unkempt. His dhoti was crumpled and his skin had become dry. And since he was walking on the road for a long time, he was covered with dust. So he, he, he gave a very disheveled and dissatisfactory appearance. Now, Chanakya introduced himself and stated his qualification. Like those of you who will ever go for an interview and face an interview board, most of you would, obviously you will have to introduce yourself and state your qualifications. Chanakya did the same thing. And he topped it with a very confident statement. He said, you will not find a more brilliant scholar than I. Now, Dhananda, who was the king and who was used to the word servility is there in your textbook, which means that people serving him. He was not in the habit of seeing people look him in the eye and answer him in such confident tones. He was very used to that, yes sir, okay sir, that kind of an attitude. So, he was slightly taken aback by the confidence of this man. And he said, leave my courtroom at once. Because he also probably must have been thinking that if this man is so opinionated, if he has such an opinion, uh, 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 you know, strong opinion, then whatever, we cannot influence him very easily. He will ask questions. He will ask for answers. So he is not a good person. We cannot control him. So he said, leave my courtroom at once. But Chanakya stood there and he said, test my knowledge. I am the man you are looking for because you are the king of this land and you must be wanting the best for the people around you. So you must be wanting the most intelligent man and I am that person. You test my knowledge. Now Dhananda could not take any more. You said you, he said you ugly Brahmin. How dare you be so presumptuous? You are so proud of yourself. You dare to talk back to the king. You dare to tell the king what to do. That test my knowledge. And he told his guards, to throw this man out of the courtroom. So when things are not happening according to his wishes or by his orders, he has to apply force and he asks the guards to throw this ugly Brahmin out. He said that I have never seen anyone more ugly than you. Your face is so ugly I can't barely look at it. So as the guards dragged him over the dusty floor of the court and then outside as he was crossing the corridor, Obviously, he was not being handled very gently. He was being handled harshly and his top knot became loose. You can see the flowing hair in this um, a particular picture. This was a great insult. Like for certain Sikhs, you will also see that they have, they tie a braid and they are very, very protective and proud about that. And they have a long hair. So, it, it was a matter of pride for him and when that top knot became loose for the Brahmin, it was a great insult. He stood up, he shook, the, shook loose of the guards and he said that you will regret this insult, Dhanananda. And he vowed that he will not tie his hair till he had not only killed the king but also dist uh, destroyed his entire clan, by which he mean, meant his entire set of relatives, successors. I mean, he would make, annihilate the entire dynasty. This was his promise. 
Now Chanakya was a man of his words and he knew that the, that this king was not good he could not be good for the people of the country and he was a very intelligent man and he was not a man who would go back on his promise so since he had vowed to destroy the nanda dynasty and kill the king he his now main of his main objective now be, began i mean became to find a man who could be the king once this, this king was removed and secondly an army with which he could attack the present king and his army and wage a war and that too successfully so he went around over fields over in cities all throughout crossing mountains and in villages looking for that appropriate candidate first he needed the candidate because then he would be sure of his next move that yes now i have a particular person to replace the king after that i will move ahead in ushara chanakya met a group of boys and there he found that one of the boys was acting as a king and he was playing with other boys the most interesting thing as chanakya stood there or sat there and i mean waited and observed there were three things which were very interesting about the way he was acting as a king the boy seemed to have an inherent royal attitude about him and whatever problems his friends were coming up with he seemed to have that instinctive sense of justice and he was not being biased with anyone while dealing with the boys who were pretending to be the courtiers so these three things struck him so he singled that boy out and struck a conversation with him the boy introduced himself as chandragupta maurya and in the course of his conversation the boy said that he was actually the son of mahanandan the rightful heir to magadh's throne because we know that dhananda had actually killed and murdered and usurped the throne so now chanakya did not have any second thoughts about who was going to be his candidate to replace this current tyrannical dhananda and as the boy went on talking he said that all his other brothers were killed and he was very lucky to have escaped with his life when dhanan when chanakya asked chandragupta to come and come with him chandragupta said that no a local herdsman had protected me gave me shelter so i cannot leave i am indebted to him i am bound to him so chanakya went and bought the boy from the herdsman and then obviously he was like a raw mold of uh, clay he needed to be shaped in order to be a good ruler for the city uh, for the kingdom of magadh so chanakya eventually sent him to takshila to be taught in the in the ways of dealing in politics statecraft and administration so now the process had started of making the king now when this side was taken care of chanakya decided now he needed an army he did not want an army where generals lieutenants and colonels were there he instead chose robbers and outlaws why did he do that because these people their families knew the kind of life they led they had nothing to hold them back and they were truly brave men they were truly brave men and they would fight to win despite the odds so this was the most perfect way in which the army could be found out now chanakya was attacking magadh from all sides but the first few attacks that he made they turned out to be failures he could not do anything his uh, army the, his amateur army was crushed by the uh, trained army of the king as this was going on once something very interesting happened 
There was once a spy who overheard that a mother who was feeding her child was told him a certain sentence. She said that, Beta, you are making the same mistake like Chanakya. And what was the mistake? So, what she said was that, uh, she said that you are acting like Chanakya. He is trying to destroy this emperor, but he is attacking the center first. But if you, just like if you break the chapati from the center, the sides are going to fall. But that is not the correct way. You have to attack from the sides and then proceed towards the center. Now, this was a great education for Chanakya who was a willing learner. And soon, he had to, he, he decided to change his tactics. He ordered that his troops now move from the border towards the center. And he also wanted to plant a spy within the center or the central administration. He was also aware that the Magad army was not great just for nothing. It had a brilliant general looking after it whose name was Kathayana. Kathayana was so fierce that he was popularly or amongst the masses known as Amatsya Rakshas. And he knew that in order to get rid, I mean in order to win a war, he needed to get rid of this general uh, Kathayana. And as we know, all is fair in love and war. He started to adopt certain tactics. He relied on his best students and recruited some of his most royal students of medicine, astrology and sp psychology as spies. One of the spies was Indu Sarma and he dressed up as a Jain monk and then he went around the city trying on the uh, instruction of Chanakya to win the confidence of the Nandas and their general. So from Chandragupta, Indu Sarma learnt many secrets of the royal family and then he disguised himself as a giant monk and astrologer and went and told the king that he was an astrologer. The king wanted to test his uh, knowledge and called him once again. And when he called him once again and he wanted to test his knowledge, uh, Indu Sarma came up with certain facts who no one else knew but the royals of the family. The king was convinced and kept him as the royal astrologer. Now this is what Chanakya needed. He had planted that camera inside the royal uh, structure that would give him all the information about the planning etc of the of the nandas so by reading the king's past very accurately he won the confidence of the royals and was appointed as the official astrologer of the nandas Soon Amatsya Rakshas started consulting him as, for, uh, as to what his next military move would be which the boy duly passed on to his teacher Chanakya. Once Chanakya came to know about the inner secrets, victory became his. Realizing one by one that the fort was falling everywhere and his power was becoming uh, less and less, Dhananda understood his fate and one day he drove a sword through his heart after all the Nanda princes had been killed. So Chanakya had actually kept his vow of not only killing the king but destroying his entire clan. Now with Dhananda removed and no one to claim being his successor, Chandragupta was coronated as the new king of Magar. By this time, under the able tutelage of Chanakya, Chandragupta had become a very good, reliable, benevolent, wise king who could mete out proper justice to everyone. And with uh, Chandragupta as, at its helm, 
the Mauryan Empire flourished and soon grew into one of India's greatest and most powerful empire. Now his task accomplished, the kingdom of Magad in safe hands, the people happy, Chanakya returned to his village. He never gave up studying. What he liked most was learning, teaching and writing. And some of the best books and the most important ones he had written till date was Chanakya Niti, Niti Shastra and Arth Shastra. And children, you know that these books are so relevant even today that they are used as reference text in major universities across the world, translated in so many languages by students of political science and used and studied by students of political science, administration and economics.